can see the value one represents no effect. Um, can be used to describe the result of each individual study uh, with a box. The values less than the values less than one on the left hand side show uh, 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 that the intervention is not effective. It is in fact possibly harmful, and on the right hand side it shows that uh, uh, it is effective or beneficial to the patient compared to control. So any questions about plotting of this information graphically uh, concerning the results of the individual studies? Okay, uh, yeah. on the first day we had a question presented to us where the intervention was a new type of fluoride and uh, compared to standard treatment, the outcome of interest was caries. Do you think if caries is the outcome measure, a value more than one will be considered beneficial or harmful? Probably harmful. Uh, why do you say that? Le explain, explain, explain a bit more about that. Uh, we are um, looking at the outcome as carious arrest or no new carious, which would be the benefit of the treatment. Okay, so if you were to measure this as no new carries. Uh, in this case, a value more than one will show benefit. But if you were to measure the outcome as the percentage of carries, then a value less than one would be beneficial. So what I'm trying to explain here is that when the value is greater than one, it shows that the thing you are measuring as outcome has a higher rate compared to control. So if it was caries that you measured and you discovered that it had a higher rate compared to control uh, with the new fluoride, then obviously a value more than one is suggesting the possibility of harm from the new intervention. Does that make sense? Okay, so Urska and Anna both say that it does make sense. Uh, Hotchka too. A a any, other, uh, any other examples you would like to put forward just so we can understand how relative risk is calculated uh, and taken forward in meta-analysis. Um, we, can, we, we can bring that up now or later as you wish. So once we have all these individual results available to us, the next thing we do is we put all this information into a statistical software package. RevMan is one that you might be using if you're doing a Cochrane review, but Stata are and virtually all other, uh, all other, both commercial and freely available software 
offer you the option to perform a meta-analysis uh, using this data from individual studies. And what you get from the output is what we are going to look at next. So basically, at the bottom of these individual results, you get what is described as a diamond. And in this diamond, the middle point, the thickest point is the point estimate of the summary effect. And the length of the diamond from one side to the other is the confidence interval of the summary effect. So what happens in a meta-analysis is that all these individual points, including those below one, including those very close to one, including those much greater than one, are all put together into a single summary point, which in this case is, happens to be 1.4, a little bit above one. And then all the confidence intervals are combined together to produce a summary confidence interval. And you can see that this length of the diamond from one end to the other, from one side to the other side, is much shorter than the length of any of the individual studies. So now you can, you can imagine that what is meta-analysis? Can somebody try to explain in words what I have just uh, described with this diagram. So just for me to double check that you, that I have conveyed what I wanted to convey correctly. Please go ahead, be brave. Uh, Anna, might you attempt to explain? Okay, well, nobody's coming forward. In this case, I'll just go back and give a little summary of where we are. Uh, the starting point of a meta-analysis, which is this diamond at the bottom of a forest plot, is the construction of the summarization of the data collected to address your question. Uh, when the data concerning outcome in your question are in the form of present or absent, and you have two groups, one of exposure to a new intervention and the other of exposure to a control treatment, then your question concerning your participants, intervention, comparison, and outcome can be summarized in a two by two table. From this two by two table, we can calculate an effect size. This effect size can be plotted in a forest plot. And the forest plot simply represents um, the range of results that are possible on the scale of your chosen effect size. So in case you have chosen relative risk, the value one will rep represent no effect. And in case the outcome is a positive, desirable thing that you are trying to achieve, 
then the value more than one will demonstrate benefit. And these points from each of the studies that you identified through step two and from which you extracted data in step three, then these points from each of these studies can be plotted uh, 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 in, in, in the space above the scale for the effect size. And then for each study, because the study size is different, you need to have an understanding of the uncertainty of the results. And this is obtained by calculating the confidence interval and plotting it across the point estimate as a horizontal line. If this line crosses the value one, this means that your result is not statistically significant. And if this horizontal line of confidence interval does not include the value one, then it means that your result is statistically significant. And uh, these individual results, the points and the confidence intervals are subjected through meta-analysis to production of a summary result. And the summary result is frequently presented as a diamond where the middle of the diamond represents the point estimate of the summary and the length from side to side represents the confidence interval of the summary. Okay, so as I was speaking, uh, Urs Urska asks the question whether confidence gives us information about dispersion of data. Okay. What do you mean by dispersion of data? So look, in the example we have chosen, the data were a two by two table where people were either positive for an outcome or negative for an outcome in their allocated group, either in intervention or in the control. In this context, what do you mean by data dispersion? Okay. Uh, so this is a sorry, term. This I is, wasn't. Um, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I wasn't very uh, attention. I haven't paid attention on it. There, there are just two results, yes or not. Uh, so it could not be um, dispersion of data. Yes. Sorry. Okay. You are probably referring to continuous measurement, for example, pain on a scale or quality of life on a scale from zero to 100, something like that. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. So if you think about it, the point estimate of effect that we have calculated is also a measurement on a scale from zero to infinity. Did you follow that, Oscar? No, sorry. The relative risk or odds ratio is a measurement of the effect. Yes. And the scale of this measurement goes from zero to infinity. Okay. And the value one means that there is no effect. Yes. So your description of dispersion of data applied to the estimate of effect is in fact correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what the confidence interval is doing here is telling you the possibility of range of results that are possible the range of effect sizes that are possible around the mean effect size that has been calculated in the meta-analysis. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. All right. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I think now you can see the difference between data and the result. So the data are the thing that are were in the two by two table. 
where we had numbers. Uh, you had outcome present or absent according to whether you were present in the intervention group or the control group. Those numbers are the data. From those numbers, we generated a result. That was the effect size. And the effect size has a dispersion around it, which depends largely on the sample size of the studies. And this dispersion is quite wide or is quite narrow if depending on how many observations were there inside the data. So dispersion of data is captured by confidence interval uh, of the effect size, which I hope with this question and a more detailed explanation is now clearer. Another point to understand here is that all that meta-analysis is trying to achieve is a mathematical summary of the results of the individual studies. It's, it cannot do anything more or less than what the individual studies have managed to achieve within their own projects. Okay, now the next thing I want to touch upon is that the meta-analytic summary can be correct or incorrect representation Okay, Mitya has made a good point there. In the previous diagram, he has picked up that none of the studies are statistically significant and neither is the meta-analysis. Uh, Mitya, you want to say a few more words about what you wrote down in the chat? Uh, yes. Well, just at looking the first plot, you can see that uh, none of those confidence intervals is uh, completely uh, on one side. So, as you said before, no study is really statistically significant. And I would suppose that the same is correct for the meta-analysis that is still just over the border on the left side. Yes, so in this meta-analysis, we can say that um, this, the, there is a small possibility that there could be less pregnancies in the intervention group. Do you see what I mean? The result of 1.4 means that there is a 40% possibility uh, that the rate of pregnancy will be higher with intervention compared to control. This is the value 1.4. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not, I don't agree exactly on that point because 1.4 doesn't mean that uh, uh, the average, the, the calculated relative risk is 1.4. So if one has the intervention, most likely it has 40% more uh, chances to get pregnant compared to the ones that don't get the intervention. Well, that, that is correct. Your description is correct. On average, it will be 40%. Yeah. But on the extremes, there is a 220% chance, which is 2.18. Yep. or 218% chance that there'll be more pregnancies. But also there is a 10% chance, which is 0 0.9, uh, which is 0 0.1 less than one, that there may be more pregnancy in the control group. So do, you, do, do colleagues feel that you can understand what I just described?
Mitya, you have uh, anything to add? No, oh, thanks. Okay, so this is how we interpret the effect size now that we have the value available in front of us. And this result, because the value 0 0.9 goes just a little bit less than one, does not reach the 0 0.05 level of statistical significance that is typically used in statistical analyses. Now, I should tell you that although we use 0 0.05 of significance as the threshold for statistical significance, there is no real reason why it should be 0 0.05. Why couldn't it be 0 0.01 or 0 0.1? Not going to go in detail of this discussion, especially because you and I through this webinar are not going to change the tradition. But I want you to keep in mind that the tradition that we use 0 0.05 or we use 95% confidence intervals is entirely a tradition. It does not have any objective or scientific basis. Because there is no fixed uh, criterion, I prefer that when we look at a diamond, we don't just look at that it is crossing the value one or not. We should look at the whole range of result. So then we understand the result better. So I think we're going to stop at this stage. We come back in 20 minutes. And when we come back in 20 minutes, we'll look at how we understand the diamond a bit better than just uh, looking at what is the overall result and the range of the result. Thank you.